Hey, what's up, guys? Tyler Sassy here, Western Welding Academy. I'm here with Ryan. Ryan Pays, I'm from Gardnerville, Nevada. He's one of our great students from Nevada. Today, we're going to shoot us a 6G, 8 inch 6G video. Let's get to it. First thing we're going to do, we're going to put a land on this pipe. This has got a knife edge bevel, and uh, I'm going to put a landing on there. Uh, we're going to do a 332 land and about a 332 gap. So I'm and spin. And spin. Just like that. 332 spacing wire. Line our seams up. No high low. Low. Nice bit up. We're gonna make this weld with uh, 6010 8 inch 5T plus 6010. It's a Lincoln electrode. Um, we're gonna put the root pass in with that, and then we're gonna they're gonna hot pass fill and cap with the Lincoln electrode, a 7018X caliber, great great rod as well. Yeah, I got that stuffed in there. Yep. And I do on like eight inch pipe. I do a little over a over an inch tack, and then I snap out, leaving that keyhole nice and small, so it's easy to tie in. I always two tack mine. And I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to two tack and keep it from getting all wonky. Okay. So I look directly across from my tack, and as long as my face is right, which it is, right? I may have to put just a, a hair more in there. So, if you look, we go 332 gap, 332 land. I can put, see that's about 332 right there. Yep. So I'm gonna tack up this side. You notice how I didn't start pushing until it was hot enough? What I do is I put my, my wedge in this side, the tight side, okay? And I tap on it, I drive it in there until both sides are equal, so the same gap. Okay, what's happening now is I've got the same gap, but I got pressure, right? This side's got the wedge forcing it over on those two tacks, forcing it over, yeah. So I'm gonna grind my tack, and I'm gonna start welding on this side. And I, I usually weld one rod or half the pipe. Okay. So whichever comes first. And I'm gonna weld until this, this is loose, meaning my gap is still the same, but, the, but I'm not forcing it the same. Does that make Got sense? Yep. So you put this tack in, right? Just like that. Yep. Now, if you were looking at a, if you were looking at the end of the pipe looking in, okay. you you would have that bump where you lit up and you, you held it just for a minute. Mm -hmm. You didn't push in quite yet because the rod wasn't heated up yet. So your tack has this bump that comes along and then there's a keyhole, right? And then yep. here's the inside of the pipe where you penetrate it. And then right about there, that metal comes up like this. Right, so there's no penetration right where you lift the tack up. So we gotta grind it. You gotta take all this metal out. Yeah, right. So when, if you grind, you wanna, when you when you do your grinding, you wanna follow the, the, the line of the pipe. Because you don't wanna take this land out. Yeah, it's like that's one of the problems when the guys get to the tack, they've ground that land down to nothing, and they get up there, they're bat, 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 bat. They get to that tack, and there's nothing to weld to. That land holds your feet for your root pass, right? We fire up. I always drop down on one knee, and I put this hand on the pipe. When we fire up, I'm going to light up. I'm going to hold it for just a second. When the rod's hot enough to where I know it's not going to snuff, then I'm going to start moving down that tack, and I'm going to start pushing in. Now push. 
Push and step. This is your rod. You have an arc cone that comes off like this. Yep. When you're further away, you're putting heat out further, which is going to make your keyhole bigger. Okay. When you get closer, you're putting, you're putting heat narrower. Yeah, okay. It's like that zoning it in more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Send it out and start over. Normally. So I pretty much I keep my rod angle pointed to the center axis of the pipe. Like what I'm trying to do is keep it pointed all the way around. Yep. Now there's times where I may I may uh, move that one way or the other for more heat, less heat. Like if I need a little less heat, I'll, I'll aim it, push the heat off the pipe. If I need a little bit more, I'll, I'll maybe I'll angle it back into my puddle a little bit. Okay. If that makes sense. And then just kind of as a good rule of thumb, I always want my keyhole about the same size as my rod. Okay. With counting the plus. So I want my keyhole about the same size as my rod. So it, it almost fits in there, but not quite. If it's bigger than that, bigger than the, the rod counting the flux, it's, it's, I'm just a little too hot or I need to change rod angle. If it's smaller than that, I need to turn it up just a little bit or, or adjust my rod angle. Okay, then the only thing I look at is I just make sure I'm not going to weld over slag on that start. I don't worry about cleaning up that whole thing. I like to keep it nice and hot. Okay. So I just kind of scratch that, make sure there's no slag in there. And then I grab another rod. I'm just going to keep banging my bevels level with the floor. Now, one of the other things, when I do get to the top, that flag, because gravity's not working with me, it's working kind of against me, it wants to slough in front of that, onto that metal. So, here is where I, I do hit it with a wire wheel. Okay. See what I mean? So it's nice and clean. Now I know I can light up and yep. not okay. worry about trapping any of that flag. We'll, we'll knock the flag off take a look at it. When you put 7018 on an inside corner, it, it wants to trap flag on the edges. The way you get, like, the way to get away from that, keep it from doing that, is by holding your sides longer. Because what happens if you don't hold the, if you don't hold the sides long enough, um, you'll get you'll get uh, a little bit of undercut right here, which is like a, it's like a little trap that hangs onto that slag. And so the, if, if you don't hold it long enough, you'll have just a dab of slag here and here. One of the tricks is, is you want to position your body to where you're kind of a little bit uncomfortable. Uh -huh. 
to where you're going to end comfortable. When you're well, then what I see you doing is really two-handing that thing. Mm -hmm. You're holding up a little bit high and you're two-handing, which puts you in a bind when you get down to the second half yeah. of the rod, right? Yeah. And you're like, you're cramped up. It's really hard for you to make a, a, a rod angle adjustment. Yep. So what I like to do is I like to hold low on the, on the holder, and I like to like put it here to where I can easily move this, this hand out of the way. Okay. So I can still make, I still have full freedom movement on my wrist to where I can make those adjustments when I need to. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. One of the great things about welding here at Western Welding Academy is there's so much welding going on and radiation in the air that coronavirus cannot exist. This is a really happy, healthy place. It's wonderful. One of the little tricks that I do on, on 6G is I'll angle the rod forward because okay. I don't have much to do. Yep. I'll bend this back just a little bit. Oh, well, okay. I'll show you. See, now rod angle adjustment's real simple right back here. Yeah. Right? Let me tie this in for you. I'm going to show you how I run up on that. Now I can lean back really easily. How'd you do, buddy? I did better than I've done before. Like, cool. Yeah. Little, little bump there where I was telling you to speed up. You yeah. kind of went fast, a little bit too fast, and you're like, oh, no, no. Okay, so one of the things that, that I would do with just like this little bump, that'll hang me up a little bit when, when you cap. Um, so just take your grinder and just kind of flat top it a little bit, get it down even with the rest of it, and I might bump that one, and, and then we'll cap it. One thing I'm going to do, since I filed that, filed those little spots of slag, I'm just going to, I'm just going to hit it again with a brush, just to make sure. Got it. Okay. On a, on a 6G weld, I don't want to leave anything for chance. I want to make yeah. dang sure I'm good. Got it. Got it. I like to turn it up just a little bit. And I'm going to go a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit faster. And there again, I just want to put about a 16th, maybe 332. I don't want to. I don't want to bump up against that eighth maximum. Okay. Let's put a 16th, 332 somewhere in there. Real nice, smooth cap. Got it. Smooth and straight. Now, I like to bust my slag off with a file and uh, see my, my start stop real smooth. Yep. And I'm about a, if you look, I'm about a 332, 16th to 332 height on that first beat.
Um, I'm going to run a little bit further on that to keep our stops and starts staggered there as well. Cool. Ryan, how much welding did you do before you came to Western Welding Academy? Maybe worked at a scrap yard for about three months and MIG welded there. Okay. About it though. A little bit of MIG welding? Yep, just a little bit. What, uh, how long you been here? This is my third week, 14th third, day. 14th day? 14th day. And we had two weeks off for Christmas in that. Mm -hmm. And now you're flicking out, doing a great job, 8 inch 6G. We've been finding a lot of really, really good welders out of the state of Nevada. Really good welders. Super good old, proud to have you here. Good old Gardnerville. Old Gardnerville, Nevada. Old Gardnerville, Nevada. So you can look like it's kind of tempting because I sealed that. It's kind of tempting to just leave that on a two, two bead cap. But if you look, you'll see little tiny specks of undercut, which, you know, in the pipe world, these welds have got to be flawless. So. After you run your side, I'll run one more. Quick little pass and I'll turn it down just a little bit. I'll turn it down just a little bit and uh, put a quick little pass on there just to kind of seal up any undercut that there is. Okay. So now this last pass, I just put a real quick, real quick little pass, and uh, I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. And um, that's critical, turn it down just a little bit. Okay. And I'm gonna kind of angle my rod up, up all the way this last pass to, to keep it from undercut. Okay. So it'll, just, it'll hold the metal up there just a little bit better. Onto the pipe. On the pipe. Yep. yep, sir. Yep. That's a wrap, folks. That's a uh, 6G. Couple little tricks that, uh, couple little 6G tricks there for you guys to use. Um, that's a two-tack method, and uh, how to use a wedge, keep it from pulling. A couple of root pass, hot pass tricks, and uh, Ryan, excellent job. Thank you. How you chose Western Welding Academy? Of course, it's somewhere else. Western Welding Academy, not some other. Honestly, it was the, the videos on YouTube where you did walkthroughs and Tyler, you were walking around showing, you know, the real world experience, uh, the beveling on the coupons, how there was a lot of pride taking in students being in the booth a lot and most all, well, all of the time being in the booth and mastering a skill on a beveled coupon to just learn that and get it down and and I was real excited to, to do that because it was it, it was unlike anything I'd seen and I was comparing a lot of things and, and checking things out and you guys were the only ones that did that so having that opportunity and the opportunity to come here and weld on that and, and learn under great instructors that was that was it there great it for me. I appreciate that that Absolutely. means a lot yeah uh, Ryan's a classic example of uh, some of the great people that have traveled here all over the country uh, for some reason, Nevada keeps producing uh, really, really, really good welders. Hey, if you guys like this content, go ahead and smash that like button and check out some of our other social media channels. We're on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Western Welding Academy. We'll see you on the next weld.